Welcome to Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. Last week, I put out a video demonstrating some stems and I used FabFilter Pro 2Q and I filtered out some low end on the drum stem and the bass. And um, some people asked me, they wanted to know a little bit more detail about um, the settings that I was using here. So I thought that I would come in and get a little more in depth so that people could um, replicate this on their own and tweak it to their liking. So the important thing is um, when you, you got to pull it up in a multi-channel mode. So if you pull it up in multi mono, it, it's not necessarily going to show up with a mode here that gives you mid side. So you, you want to be able to change it from left, right and put it to mid side. And then, um, one thing is if you hover over here, I always put it in this auto makeup gain, which it, it depends on the source, whether you, you want to use it or not, but generally I, I always keep this on. Then I was cutting at 110 hertz here. You go here and you select the kind of EQ that you want it to be because you you know it's it's basically an in, infinite amount of bands that you can create in Pro Q2, and so you select cut, and then um, tw I I'm using an 18 dB per octave slope. I mean you could go a little more gentle and do 12 or whatever. I mean, you could go all the way up to 96 and it could just be like a razor cut. But um, I just felt this was the, you know, a sweet spot while still sounding musical, but clearing up a lot of that low end. So that's basically it. Now I'm gonna get to another thing is somebody actually asked me a very clever question and they thought, they asked me, um, you know, similar to this Pro-Q2 filter on the, the sides, what if I used the Brainworks Plugin Alliance Mono Maker, and how would that be different? So I figured that I would just give an example and let you hear it. So basically this, you know, is, is, is an awesome mid-side type matrix. You can do a lot of different stuff. And um, I went ahead and bypassed all the parameters except for the Mono Maker section here. And I went ahead and set it to 110 hertz so it would match as closely as possible to what we have on the Pro Q2. There, there's no selection for slope, whatnot, but I assume that this is just a filter just like Pro Q2. That'll be the difference is whatever slope is preset here. All right, so let's go ahead and create a loop here and, and take a listen. So I wanna remind you how this all sounds without any, um, processing whatsoever. So I'm going to take off the Abbey Road thing too. All right. So this is without, and then I'll let it loop once and then I'll hit the Pro Q2 loop again, and then I'll hit the, the mono maker. Okay, so what I'm hearing is I'm definitely hearing a big difference and I, I am assuming that it's the slope uh, of the filter here, but I don't know. It would be up to Dirk and the guys in Plugin Alliance that designed this plugin, which I'll have to ask them and maybe I'll chime in in the comments section of this video. But to my ear, this mono maker actually sounds a lot more punchier. It's a little more clear. Um, just a focused low end and the Pro Q2 is still more focused than not being engaged, but it's a little more mellow. So I think that's very interesting. So let's loop that again and just take a listen. I'll do the same thing.
So again, it's very close, but um, I think it's very cool that uh, somebody suggested to try this because, you know, how better to, to give an answer to a question than to just show it in an example. So I hope that answered your questions and please, you know, give this stuff a try. It's really cool. It's really useful. Um, some people mentioned, you know, why not just put a, a mid-side filter on the stereo bus? And again, it just depends on your signal chain. You know, um, I think sometimes if you're able to do it in the box before you send it out of your converter, it, it's better. It makes your converter work a little less hard. You know, you're filtering out some low end so that it can focus on the frequencies that you want it to. But if, if uh, you don't have that option, then absolutely you can throw it on the stereo bus. I have the TK Audio Tekalizer and I use that all the time and that's great. So thanks for watching Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter, and I'll check you out next time.